Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to be sharing with you, uh, well, not all of the puzzles I received for the month of November, but just some of them uh, because I received a lot of puzzles during November. I mean like a ridiculous, mind blowing amount of puzzles. And I decided to be a bit more sensible instead of making an extremely really, really long haul video, which some of you might enjoy. Uh, I thought I'd instead do two parts. So today we're going to do part one and don't worry, part two is on its way. So don't stress, it'll be out before too long. Uh, but for part one, we've got lots of different brands, of course, lots of colorful, vibrant, very interesting puzzles. We've got wooden puzzles. We've got gold foil puzzles, some Christmas ones. Of course, we have cat puzzles. So yeah, lots of fun ones to go through together. And if there's any you're uh, interested to know about, definitely check out the description box below because I'll be putting the details for all the puzzles there. Hopefully they'll all fit. If not, I might make a pinned comment or something, but yeah, check below. Um, so I think you might as well get yourself a drink, get something to snack on, preferably tasty and get comfy and let's go through them all. I have just grouped all the puzzles based on what brand they are. Uh, so we've got quite a few Ravensburger ones here. So let's start going through them. So this first one is 1500 pieces and it is called Love Letters Chocolate Shop. And it's just a really pretty, beautiful image. It just really caught my eye, just very fantastical and very whimsical and pretty. Uh, yeah, it's basically this Love Letters Chocolate Shop with all these beautiful cakes and chocolates in the, the window. Um, beautiful fairy lights and a very pretty pink kind of awning. And then it's got this little uh, ornate kind of postal box that says for love letters only. And yeah, it looks like maybe the box, the post box is full because people have been dropping off their love letters and parcels and little cute other packages that look very pretty. And we've got a cat here. Maybe the cat's minding the, the love letters and parcels. But yeah, it's kind of, it's very cute, very sweet. Maybe even a good Valentine's Day or romantic type puzzle. But yeah, it's very, really pretty and there's a lot of details and ornate, even the sort of grating in the door. It's like this beautiful wrought ironwork, lots of details and all these very pretty vines with flowers and yeah, just a lot going on and beautiful doves and pot plants and things. So I think this will be a really fun one to do. A lot of very pretty details to discover while doing this one, I think. And then we've got this 1000 piece Ravensburger by the artist Dean McAdam and it's called Most Everyone is Mad. So it's very sort of Alice in Wonderland inspired. Um, I sort of had been eyeing off uh, this artist's work for a while and thought it was like pretty fun and eventually I guess I caved and ended up getting these because um, I think these have been out for quite a while. But I just think they're really, they look like good fun. They almost have a real quirky, whimsical, fantastical look about them. Very, a bit quite cartoony and yeah, just very quirky, a lot of the characters. Um, but this one, yeah, it's Alice in Wonderland inspired. So we've got Alice down here looking a bit shocked and in awe and not sure what's going on. I don't think I would either. We've got this giant grin on the Cheshire Cat's face. Looks a bit terrifying with all these sharp teeth. And we've got the white rabbit. Well, actually, it's kind of a brown rabbit, but we have a rabbit. And um, what else we got? The queen and the like caterpillar and the mushroom. Oh no, I guess that's the white rabbit down here. We've got another rabbit. Um, I can't remember all the characters, um, but I think this one would be a good one, good, good fun to put together. And I don't know, it could be a good idea to like watch one of the sort of Alice films out there and, and then do this, that could be good fun. But yeah, I really like all the details. There's a lot going on and it's quite pretty, even though it's quirky and, and a bit bonkers. But yeah, it's, yeah, it looks really, really fun. So I think that'll be a good one to do. And then this one's also by the same artist. Um, this is called Hansel and Gretel Beware, exclamation um, mark. And again, the same sort of style and a lot of very quirky, uh, creepy, cute kind of characters. So we've got, you know, some weird, strange looking characters, scary looking bunny and owl and some very suspicious looking crows or ravens and yeah, it's quite dark and spooky around the border of the puzzle, but then we've got this beautiful, bright, colorful candy house, of course, with Hansel and Gretel looking very, uh, you know, happy and uh, excited by it, as you would. We've got the witch over here. Yeah, and there's like this giant cupcake and lots of, yeah, giant different candies, candy canes and swirly lollipops and giant cherry. It looks very pretty. Um, so yeah, I would definitely be tempted by this house as well, I think. But yeah, uh, I, I like, 
the style of this artist. I think it's really fun, very playful, a little, a little bit dark as well, but yeah, cute and creepy, I think. And yeah, they obviously enjoy sort of doing their own take on like kind of fairy tales and things like that. So yeah, I think this is good fun as well. And then the next one is another very sort of beautiful, very pretty detailed one, 1000 pieces, and it's called uh, Tuscan Oasis by Jason Taylor. And yeah, very similar to the sort of style of that chocolate shop one, just a very pretty and ornate kind of image. They've got this lovely kind of little villa or like open kind of, I guess, sunroom or relaxation room in the middle of like the Tuscan sort of countryside in this beautiful garden. So we've got lots of little statues and fountains and plants. And again, like this little house or hut has got like uh, vines with flowers and things. And we've got a cute little cat, which is a uh, very cheekily watching some birds in a bird cage here. And yeah, and there's like lots of cute little things on the inside, the furnishings and decorations of the, I guess, little house. I don't, I don't know what you call this, I guess. Well, Tuscan, it's called Tuscan Oasis, but I guess it's like a little villa type thing. But yeah, really cute. And I think this one will be just a really relaxing, beautiful one to put together. Now we have one more from Ravensburger. So this is one that I decided to get for my Christmas collection. It's called, three, uh, it's 300 pieces and they're like large format, so easy to see and handle. And that is my cat telling me it's snack time. I have very bad timing with my videos apparently. Um, anyway, this one's called The Lodge and it's by uh, Laurie Shorey. I think that's how you say it. And yeah, it's just a very cute little 300, well, big 300 piece one of like this little uh, birdhouse. It's decorated and it even it's decorated for Christmas. So it's sort of got red and white colors and then this little Christmas wreath on its door, <laughs> so cute. And then all these lovely little birds. Like, I'm not sure what all of them are. I guess that's like, oh, what is it? I've seen it in, I think I've seen it in Hawaii or something, but like some maybe little finches or jays or something like that. I, I guess more North American birds that I'm not too familiar with, but there's a little deer in the background and lots of snow and like pine, like needles and, and these little red berry type things. I'm not sure what they are either, but it all looks very festive and Christmassy and yeah, very wintry and Christmas, Christmassy. So yeah, I think really cute. And it's sort of an interesting style. It's sort of, they look like photos of the birds. So it's a bit hyper-realistic but it's a bit, a little bit collagey as well. Some things look maybe digital. Some things look like their photography. Maybe some things are a bit illustrated. I'm not too sure, a bit of a mix. But oh, I just realized as well, there's a tiny little snowman as well on the house. So yeah, really cute. <laughs> Next, I've got a stack of puzzles here from the brand Schmidt. And there's a few here by Shelley Davies, who's uh, pretty well known for her really beautiful and very fun, interesting sort of collages. And I believe she does most of them um, by kind of laying them all out, all the little knickknacks out and then photographing them from above. So I don't think that much of it is added in the computer or anything like that. It's all like kind of done the old fashioned way, which is pretty cool. Anyway, this one is 1000 pieces and I believe it's called Vintage Toys and it's just really bright and colorful and a lot of fun. And yeah, like the name suggests, it's full of really kind of more old fashioned or yeah, vintage style toys, a lot of wooden toys and little tin toys and cute like plastic wind up toys, like a little penguin here and cute little tin bird. Got uh, a duck, uh, what else, teddy bears, even a little xylophone. So many really cute things, very colorful. Um, yeah, I, I've really enjoyed doing her puzzles before. I think Cobble Hill has quite a few because you just find so many fun, whimsical, quirky little things along the way as you puzzle, you, like put the puzzle together. So. Yeah, and I think this one's gonna be, yeah, really fun and cute to do. Uh, so next we have another one by her, also 1000 pieces. Uh, this one is called uh, Vintage Board Games. And yeah, it's got all sorts of like very, uh, yeah, uh, vintage looking, retro looking games. Like we've got a, uh, some of them seem to have like German names actually. Um, and maybe even some other things. I mean, I guess Schmidt is a German brand, so maybe that makes sense. Um, but we've got a couple here playing some sort of dice game and they look very 70s, 80s. So yeah, quite retro. Um, but yeah, we've got like all sorts of really old games. A lot, I don't even know what they are. I mean, there's like lots of dominoes and different dice things, some mahjong, 
um, we've got a backgammon set, lots of card games and things, chess, probably some checkers, yeah, all sorts of like really interesting things. I guess a lot of very, yeah, like games that maybe people don't play so much anymore actually. Um, like even backgammon, I used to play that with my dad and I'd play a lot of card games with like family and friends and stuff, but yeah, I don't really play a lot of those now, so it's very nostalgic actually. But yeah, I really like it. There's a lot going on and it's just a really beautiful design. And I think this will be really interesting to do as well. Again, just sort of discovering all the little like game paraphernalia and stuff. So yeah, really interesting and very cool. And then we've got one more from Shelley Davies. This one is really, really gorgeous as well. 1000 pieces, I keep looking at the wrong side. Down here, okay, it's called Vintage Artist Materials. And yeah, this one is like jam packed full of gorgeous like artist related knickknacks so a paint palette of course and we've got paint brushes stamps scissors uh like all sorts of like different colorful materials like or you know like crayons and pencils different paints um like all sorts of stuff and like what else other like a lot of stationary items you know pencil sharpeners paper clips and things like that Lots of little posters and things. Yeah, there's so much going on. And it's just laid out really in a really fun way as well. So I think this is really good, like gorgeous as well. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to do. Yeah, all of hers are always just so fun. And then we've got a couple more from Schmidt. Um, so these two are by the artist Ilona Rainey. And I've been very into collecting her puzzles because they're just so beautiful. And a bit like Shirley Davies, very really ornate and a little bit collagey as well. So oh, I keep looking at the wrong side. Uh, this one is called Pink Beauty and yeah, it's got this very pretty blush pink kind of background and a lot of her work features these sort of little birds and bird cages and also like these little bubbles or pearls. So that seems to be like a common theme in most of her work. Um, even uh, there's like a couple other puzzles of hers by Schmidt that you can get as well and I think even Hay have some of hers as well. But yeah, they all have this very lacy, pretty intricate looking uh, like vibe or look aesthetic to them yeah and they're very very like uh fine and detailed there's a lot going on and very very pretty and a little bit quirky so yeah there's a lot of birds in this one um there's even like a little cup of milk or something up here a bit random they're a little bit surreal and yeah very fantastical whimsical or another little cup of tea or something bird cages a very funny looking <laughs> bird here um what else is like butterflies and yeah like I always find you can't quite tell what's going on it's very maybe dreamlike so maybe it's not meant to necessarily be like a literal interpretation I guess it's just her fantasy and yeah just gorgeous so many beautiful things going on so again I think this is one of those types of puzzles that you would really discover a lot as you puzzle or even take photos of it or something like that now we have another one by her and I think both this one and this one are fairly recent. Okay, I found the correct side. Uh, this one is called Decorating with Dreams. So, and it has a cat, I've already found that. So again, this is very, very pretty and lots of so much going on in it. We got, again, lots of uh, birds and these sort of bubbles or pearls, almost looks like it's snowing or raining. We've got a cute little cat here and it's holding an umbrella and it's got a bird and some sort of gift box and has little boots on it. Maybe it's Puss in Boots. Um, I can see a, a cute white mouse or another little mouse as well. Ribbons and this one actually might be a little bit Christmassy, I think, because I can see like a little mouse, I think, wearing a Santa hat and there's little gifts like birds with on top of gifts and the cat with the gift and a gift box down there. So yeah, maybe this is actually kind of a little secret Christmas, Christmassy festive kind of one, which I didn't realize. And actually some of these look like little Christmas bauble decorations as well. So yeah, really pretty. I mean, I really think you could do it any time of year, but it would be lovely to do for Christmas as well. Christmas in July, July maybe. So uh, yeah, and speaking of Christmas, I actually, you'll probably see in this haul and the part two, uh, I did get a fair few sort of Christmassy puzzles that I added to my collection. I never used to be into Christmas, Christmas puzzles. Gosh, I'm getting tongue tied. Christmas puzzles, but 
I just saw, well, so many really pretty ones. So yeah, there's been a lot of really beautiful Christmassy festive designs. And I guess, yeah, this could be one of them. But because I didn't get to them all <laughs> during December, I might even do some in July. So yeah, could do this one in July. But yeah, really beautiful, very, very pretty and definitely looking forward to doing it. So let's get onto the next stack. So I've got quite a mix of interesting puzzles in this pile here. So let's start going through them. So I've got a few here from Casterland and I just have really liked some of their recent designs and decided to get some. Um, so this one is actually 3000 pieces and it's called Interlude. Um, and I think it's just, it says produced by Caster. It does have some names here. I'm not going to try and pronounce those. Um, but so maybe it's done by their own artists or like art department, um, but yeah, it's very pretty. And I don't normally buy uh, such large piece counts because I literally just don't have anywhere to really do them. Like I'd have to do it in sections or something because my table's not big enough and even my largest puzzle board is not usually big enough. But um, this actually happens to be in the same size as this 2000 piece one. They're both, I'll, I'll pop it up on the screen, but 92 by 68 centimeters or 36.2 by 26.8 inches. So they're both the same size. So I think this 3000 piece one is actually one of these, uh, or like Castle Land tend to do puzzles in bigger piece counts, but make the pieces like teeny weeny cute. So I know like Bluebird does that. Um, and I've done a previous 1500 piece um, Castle Land puzzle that was like the same size as the standard 1000 piece. So it seems to be a thing they do. Maybe just so it's more appealing size wise, like so more people can, do it and don't have to do it on the floor or something. So yeah, that's interesting. So I think hopefully both of these should fit on my uh, big puzzle board that I do the 2000 piece puzzles on, fingers crossed. Anyway, we'll get back to this 2000 piece one in a sec. But yes, this one is very pretty. It's called Interlude. It's colorful, but it's kind of muted colors, which I think, yeah, it looks quite very beautiful and yeah, a bit more subdued, but yeah, still just really lovely. But it's got these colorful toucans here and another one in the background. and just surrounded by like tropical jungly rainforest stuff. So we've even got some fruit, which looks like maybe mangoes. And we've got little flowers here, which look like passion fruit flowers. I think they are. And like lots of foliage and some pretty butterflies and other flowers. But yeah, really beautifully like illustrated or painted. I'm not sure what the medium is, but very, very pretty. And yeah, just a gorgeous image, I think. And I'm excited to do teeny weeny puzzle pieces at th in 3000 pieces. Although hopefully I don't lose any, that, that is definitely a risk. Um, and then this 2000 piece one is called Owls um, and it's very pretty as well. And I think as well, this is just by like the Castland kind of design team or art team. Um, so yeah, same sort of, I guess similar style to the other one, but very ornate. These owls have like, again, sort of colorful, but more subdued or um, a bit more like mature color palette. And they've got lots of patterns in them, lots of paisleys and swirly sort of very ornate designs and even the background. And we've got lots of lovely flower patterns and leaves and butterflies and some cute little owls down here. But yeah, it's really pretty. Um, yeah, just beautiful sort of rich, but more subdued colors. So yeah, I think it's really nice. I quite like this style. I've never really done anything quite like it. I just, but I think it's really nice, so. Yeah, looking forward to it. And then interestingly, I've got a couple more cast line here, which are 1500 pieces. And they're both by the artist, David Gauchut. Gauchut, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but you might notice the style is actually quite similar to the last two. Like if I hold this one up, yeah, it's like, I don't know, it has a similar look and feel to me. So kind of interesting. Don't know who did what first, um, but I've definitely, I mean, I think I probably saw the owls and the toucans and probably thought it was by the same artist because it has such a very like strong similarity. But, you know, I don't mind. I mean, clearly I like this style, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I quite like his work. He's got some by some puzzles or puzzle designs by pomegranate as well, which are really lovely. Um, but yeah, I, I think his work's really beautiful and very ornate. This one, is, anyway, this one is called Feline Fiesta. And yeah, it's uh, probably more colorful and bright than the other two, um, but it's similar style in that the cat, like the owls is filled with all these little patterns and paisley patterns and florals. And it looks like we've got beautiful hydrangea flowers in the purples and pinks around the cat. 
and there's like also little mosaic patterns like it's really jam-packed with like lots of detail just like the other two butterflies and then we've got this like, very funny whimsical looking cat's face over here with the big wide eyes so it's a bit weird I don't know if it's like spying on this colorful cat maybe it's jealous because you know this colorful cat's very fancy looking um I don't know what's going on but but I like it it's cool it's really yeah whimsical and very pretty so I think this one will be fun especially since it's it's a cat so bonus and then we have another owl one here and this one's just called hoot and by the same artist um and yeah 1500 pieces and again this is like the colors are a bit probably a bit more vibrant than the first two like a bit like the cat it's a bit maybe a bit more colorful and a bit more rich and vibrant very beautiful like this owl has lots of patterns in it and i love this sort of very like deep blue very pretty and eye-catching um yeah beautiful sort of like twigs and leaves and flowers yeah just yeah really be beautiful so uh yeah i guess i'm into this style now who knew i guess i feel like this wouldn't normally be something i'd go for but there's just something about this particular kind of style of artwork that's just really caught my eye lately so yeah but i think these are really beautiful anyway let's mix it up a bit we've got a couple here from clementoni and this is one i did well i i got it to add to my christmas collection i did actually manage to do it for christmas hooray um, it's called jolly christmas and it's 1000 pieces um, and it says impossible puzzle it wasn't impossible i hate to break it to you spoilers but it was it was a bit challenging but yeah it's one of these very busy colorful garish very kitsch uh kind of collages of all these like christmas ornaments and decorations a lot of them look very kind of 80s or a bit garish and you know stuff i remember sort of having as a kid and like, yeah very like yeah very colorful and like kooky and but kind of cute we've got like some like kind of polar bears and a little gingerbread man and nutcrackers and, uh, and a little polar bear and but yeah a lot of gold and sparkly things and glittery things and then they've kind of added a little like colorful snowflake patterns across the top and the bottom of the puzzle just to add more kooky details i guess but yeah very very busy a lot going on but yeah a lot of fun to do and i just like how like in your face and colorful and cheery it is yeah i think it was good fun and yeah a little bit on the challenging side but definitely not impossible um yeah i yeah i had fun doing it i think it was a good sort of good christmas one so yeah glad i got it and then because apparently i like challenges <laughs> i picked up this impossible puzzle supposedly by clementoni and it's 1000 pieces and it's sort of by i guess it's a brand it's called toki doki and um they've been around for a while um and the artist does a lot of really cute colorful little characters they've got like a different series of characters like they've got these little pony unicorn things or little cactus people funny little dogs and cats and mermaid unicorns like cat, uh, yeah like donut people so they've got all these funny little cute uh characters and yeah definitely my kind of thing and i've definitely had like i think i've got some t-shirts by this brand and some collectible toys and stuff so they do all sorts of stuff but yeah when i saw um this as a puzzle i was like uh yes i have to get that <laughs> so yeah really cute but yeah there's lots and lots of the characters by the brand jam-packed in here some seem to be repeating like i can see this little mermaid pony over here as well and this like person in the donut i can see them a couple times or a few times so it definitely it's got repeating elements but i don't think it's a repeating pattern i think yeah it definitely seems to be mixed up so this looks like it probably would be fairly tricky because it'd be a bit hard to sort i think you just you know be more of a matter of getting used to the image and where things go in it because yeah a bit difficult to sort by colors because it's so colorful and there's so much jam packed into it so i can definitely see this one being uh well not impossible but pretty tricky and challenging but also really fun because the characters are just so cute and there's a lot of like fun details to discover so yeah really happy i was able to get this one and then we've got a uh Okay, I could not resist this one because I'm a crazy cat lady. This is by Treffle and it's 1000 pieces. And what is it called? Lady with a cat. And it's just so, 
It's so bonkers and it's stupid and I had to get it and it's probably going to be really annoying and difficult to put together but I don't care. Uh, I needed it. <laughs> needed. Um, it's based off the painting which I can't remember what it's called but it's like the same lady but she's holding like a ferret or something like that or a weasel but I'm not sure if it, what it's actually called. Lady with a weasel? A ferret or something? <laughs> not a cat but they've replaced that whatever animal she's normally holding with this white fluffy pudgy chunky looking cat and I just think it's so funny. I've actually got a 500 piece one by Treffle which is like Mona Lisa holding like a big chunky orange cat so that one was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it. I just thought it was so silly and really enjoyed it so of course I couldn't resist getting this one but yes I think I'm in for a bit of pain to do this one because there's so much of this dark background like there is pattern in it it's very subtle um, but like a lot of dark colors so it's probably gonna be a pain to do but but oh well it'll probably be good fun anyway so yeah that was just a silly one I decided to get because I'm silly and make terrible life choices apparently and then we have okay you're gonna see a bit of a running theme here so this is by Bluebird Puzzles and it's called the Avian Sanctuary and it's 1000 pieces and it's by the artist David Gauchut or Gauchut Gauchut who knows if you know please let me know and correct me but the same artist who did the couple of the Castellan ones so um, yeah it, it's a little bit different style but it has some similarities like I guess like the painterly little I guess some of the art style is similar but it's a, quite a different image but yeah it's really pretty and it has like this lovely ornate bright colorful birdhouse and all these like beautiful birds and flowers and it's very colorful even some more birdhouses there um, but yeah the birds flying around and just sitting around and yeah it's just really pretty I thought um, and I just yeah I guess I just really like a lot of his artwork so yeah but I get yeah I guess it's different to the others but it's still there's something about it maybe the sort of ornateness or the way he's painted things is similar to like the cat and that sort of thing so yeah I don't know but I just think it's very pretty and then we've got three more here so let's see we've got one from Deco hopefully I'm saying that right this one's called Treehouse and it's only 200 pieces but I just thought it was really lovely and I believe it's uh, so they're puzzles that come in these long kind of boxes here uh, the puzzles themselves are like elongated a sort of panorama type one so I believe it's going to be fairly big because I think the smaller piece size they make the pieces quite large to handle so yeah kind of I think this is more aimed at kids but they have some really beautiful designs even at the small piece counts and so I decided to get this one um, but yeah annoyingly they don't really show you the whole image on the front of the box but they do have a teeny weeny version on the back so I'm going to try and squint at that and tell you what's in here so yeah it's called treehouse and it does have like a big treehouse on one side and has this little girl uh, with like a little cute bob haircut and cute little outfit and gum boots and she seems to appear well, it looks like there's lots of her doing all different activities around the treehouse like you know watering plants looking out the window reading a book in a giant teacup um, hanging up little lanterns or something and then there's all cute little yeah colorful lanterns and little I guess flowers and lights and things like it's all very decorative and there's so many cute details there's like a giant bird's nest with very colorful little birds and um, a little snail or a giant snail I guess I don't know is she small or is like the snail and the birds giant who knows <laughs> But yeah, very just very pretty and whimsical and a lot of lovely little details. Kind of more on the pastel side actually. Yeah, like lovely soft like bright pastels, I guess, sort of softer colors and stuff. But yeah, it looks lovely and I think it's going to be a really pretty one to put together. So, yeah, glad I grabbed that one. Sometimes it's fun just doing a really small piece count and just enjoying the image and, you know, I think it's yeah, fun to do all sorts of piece counts. You don't always have to do a thousand pieces sometimes 200 pieces is just as fun as well and then we've got I guess going back to 1000 pieces we have this uh, one called paper rainbow 1000 pieces and it says impossible 
and it's like number two in their series. And this is a very, I don't know if it's a new brand, but it's new to me. Um, and I believe, okay, it's by the brand All Jigsaw Puzzles, but I think they're a website that sort of both produces their own puzzles, but uh, sells like other brands too. So it's like actually alljigsawpuzzles.co.uk. So it's a UK based brand. So yeah, kind of interesting. Um, but I just, of course, decided, I was intrigued to try the brand and then I saw this very pretty kind of a take on a gradient with all little strips of paper and I just thought it looked fun and probably pretty easy to do and a great way to sort of, a great introduction to trying out the brand. And I, of course, had to have a sneak peek and look at the pieces and they actually look very similar to like Gallison pieces. Um, if you've, no, no, sorry, not Gallison, Gibson. Getting my G's mixed up there. They look very similar to Gibson pieces. So if you've ever done a Gibson's puzzle, it could could be similar to that. Could even be made in the same factory, I'm not sure, but it has a very similar look to, the, to it. So like gray uh, cardboard backing and similar sort of piece shapes and sizes and stuff. So yeah, but they look nice. Looks like nice quality. So yeah, really intrigued to try that one out. Hopefully I might get to do it soon. Um, but yeah, so have high hopes for this brand. And it wasn't overly expensive or anything. It was just a normal price. So yeah, excited to try it out. And then the last one for this pile, don't worry, we got more, um, is one that I got secondhand off someone. So just bought it recently because it was a good price and I just thought the I don't know, I just enjoyed the image. So this is actually a Suns Out one and it's only five, it says 500 plus pieces. I'm like, I always find it weird when they do that. Just say 500, it's about 500, okay? And it says larger size pieces for easy grasp. Great, we love that. Sunflowers and Songbirds by Jerry Gadamus, I believe. Anyway, um, just kind of a simple but cheery image. I just really liked it. Um, beautiful giant sunflower and some other little ones and these like, um, what are they called? They're like a thistle or something with these like, they're spiky, so don't, you're not supposed to touch them because they look, they're gonna be painful, but they have this beautiful purple on the top. And yeah, just all these lovely colorful birds, like these bright yellow ones and little hummingbirds. But yeah, and this beautiful blue sky. So it just looks very idyllic and just so sunny and cheerful. And it's only like, well, about 500 pieces. So I just thought it was, yeah, it's a really pretty one and just really caught my eye. Um, yeah, I think it would just be a lovely one to do. So let's get on to the next pile of puzzles. So I've got quite a mix of interesting puzzles in this stack here, so let's go through them. So the first one is by Buffalo Games. It's 1500 pieces. It's by the artist Josie Lewis and it's called Hex Appeal, which is a bit of a cheeky name. But yeah, it's all these little hexagon shapes and I think they might be little like paper cutout kind of uh, hexagons that are all just like, uh, you know, laid out in an interesting design or pattern, I guess, because you can see some sort of overlapping others and little shadows and stuff. So yeah, kind of interesting. But yeah, Josie Lewis is often uh, kind of known for her like really bright, like rainbow color designs and sort of simple, but bold and eye catching. But this one's actually a bit more of a like subdued mature color palette. So kind of interesting, but still colorful. And I guess a kind of take on a rainbow, maybe not exactly a gradient, but just more a pattern. But yeah, kind of simple, but like very beautiful. So I think this one might be like a good like meditative kind of puzzle where you just sort of focus on the colors and shapes rather than like there being a specific image. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it just looks really, yeah, really beautiful. And then next we've got a couple more Buffalo games. So this is an Amy Stewart one and it's called Tea and Cookies, 1000 Pieces. And it's very bright and colorful compared to the last one, very uh, vivid and vibrant. Um, and if you've seen my video doing the Eurographics cookie party puzzle, which I'll link up here, you might realize that this artwork is quite similar. So I don't know uh, who did what first, but I mean, I like them both, but uh, spoilers, I didn't really love the quality of the Eurographics, but when I saw that Amy Stewart had done this design with Buffalo Games, I knew that at least I'd enjoy the pieces of Buffalo Games, so figured I'd get it. But yeah, I really like it. It's so fun, all these little, uh, different cookies and a lot of like uh, decorated like iced cookies. So we've got like gingerbread people and then we've got like cookies in the shapes of teapots and rainbows and strawberries, suns or like green owl here with big eyes and a cupcake, a sheep. Yeah, there's so many 
really cute little iced cookies and then of course you've got a lovely cup of tea here so you can enjoy that while you're eating some cookies but yeah it's really pretty like the details are really fun and just yeah such a happy colorful puzzle so i think yeah that'll be good fun to do and then the other one from them is it's their signature collection 1000 pieces pieces and it's called the artist room and i think this is by yeah the artist eduard hopefully i said that correctly but yeah it's just a very tranquil beautiful looking room and yeah this artist is very lucky they have this lovely sort of corner uh room that's like all like has you know light filled and has all these windows so they've got their spectacular view of like mountains and this lovely lake and horses and trees and greenery so very inspiring i think and you can see all their paint palettes and they've got their like horse pictures that they've been doing and flowers and like boats and things and of course got all their like artist paraphernalia paintbrushes paints like you know pencils and of course the floor is paint splattered a true artist and there's a cute little doggy having a nap on the floor as well so yeah lots of detail in this one very beautiful and i think it'll be a very relaxing pretty one to do as well and then next we've got one that really caught my eye because it's just so bold and vibrant and colorful it's called australian wildflowers and it's 1000 pieces so um yeah just gorgeous it's by the artist mel baxter and this is by it's not a puzzle company it's hardy grant who is like a publisher so i think they do like they've done other puzzles before but they do lots of books and things like that too so i'm not sure what the piece quality will be like hopefully good fingers crossed because this is, this is a really beautiful image but yeah it's got Australian flowers. I don't know them all because I'm terrible at knowing flower and plant names, but we've got like, I think a waratah and like um, wattle and uh, lots of other pretty flowers that I have no idea what they're called, but I'm assuming, well, I can, I definitely recognize some as being Australian. So I'm assuming they all are since it's Australian wildflowers, but there's also some birds. So we've got like a magpie here and a lovely little like rainbow, I think a rainbow lorikeet. It's like a parakeet or like our little one of our little parrots we've got like wasps and butterflies and yeah it's just really really colorful and i love the sort of bold line work of like around all the different elements yeah it looks really cool very eye-catching and also a very warm color palette like lots of reds pinks oranges yellows so yeah um but yeah i think it's stunning so yeah very excited about this one i just think yeah it's just just a gorgeous image and then we've got a couple here and I'm not exactly sure who made this. It says Print Club London um, collaborating with Lucky's. So I'm like, did Lucky's make this? Did both of them make this? I'm not really sure. Um, this is the first time getting anything from, I guess, this brand or brands. But the artist is Jacqueline Colley and it's the, uh, uh, the puzzle. Gosh, I'm losing, losing my words here. It's called Love is Power and it's 500 pieces. And I think you'll... In a minute, you'll see that these two are sort of like a set, I guess. Um, anyway, I should show you the picture. <laughs> yeah, it's just almost looks like a poster image kind of because it's like this white background and it's, it says love is power and it's got um, this beautiful sort of like emblem in the middle with like this tiger's, like a roaring tiger and flowers and stuff like I think poppy flowers and leaves and things. But yeah, it's really quite eye-catching and striking. Um, and yeah, I think it's just... Yeah, beautiful and love the pink box and everything so you know i've never tried this brand so i'm excited to try it i saw my friend on instagram uh do this one and i was like okay i need to get that and try it for myself it looks really gorgeous so yeah um so yeah excited to do that one and then yeah i guess it's matching pair is this one which is yeah print club london by and luckies and it's the same artist jacqueline collie and this one is called courage is within it's also 500 pieces and this one is yeah also like a kind of poster sort of image but this one's got a black background and it says courage what is it courage is within and this one has is it what are you you are is it a cheetah a, a leopard i don't know another wild cat kind of i guess roaring or kind of looking happy actually in like another emblem and it's got all these pretty little flowers but yeah i thought they were both like really nice i mean i probably like the other one a bit more because it's a bit more pink but also a bit more eye-catching than this one but i thought they were both nice so yeah i'm excited to try this out they look really pretty 
could be cool to like do them together or I don't know, but excited for them anyway. And then we've got one here from Fred or Genuine Fred. So this is 1000 pieces and what's it called? It's called Temple by James hmm, Gillard. Let's hope that's right. And it's this really uh, kind of interesting looking like maybe Indian inspired sort of temple, but it's kind of an interesting image. It almost looks a bit like broken apart or pixelated, like digital kind of thing. It's quite interesting. But yeah, I love the sort of bronzy, goldy kind of dome on it and the towers and this blue sky and then all this like bright green and like green foliage. Like it looks like you're in the jungle looking through to this. If you're hearing that, that's a loud aeroplane going over. Leave me alone, I'm trying to film a video. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it kind of makes you feel like you're in the jungle or something peering through into a clearing with this like temple but yeah it looks yeah it looks very eye-catching very stunning so yeah I saw that and it's like why not I quite like that so yeah and I don't mind the Fred quality I think it's all right so I think that'll be a nice one to do and then we've got a very bright vivid colorful one here um, this one I actually bought secondhand or someone as well so this is by pick me up puzzle um, what's it called it's like I think it's like uh, talking tables is like the brand and then it's pick me up puzzle I don't know but this one is called Frida Kahlo puzzle and it's only 500 pieces and yeah it's this very vibrant image of Frida Kahlo love the hot pink background and beautiful sort of flowers in her hair it sort of looks like the artwork looks a bit like a screen print but then it looks like there's photo collage flowers sort of put on like her hair and then like on her top here so yeah it's kind of an interesting artwork and then it has like text down here I'm not going to read it <laughs> but yeah it's like it's yeah kind of interesting so that looks like fun um, yeah just really colorful very like bright and yeah my kind of thing so yeah looking forward to that um, I have done one of their puzzles before and it, the pieces reminded me a lot of cloudberries like if you've done cloudberries they have that kind of waxy surface feel and these felt like that um, and actually, unpopular opinion, I mean, I love cloudberries, but sometimes I find, depending what puzzle image it is, I do get false fits. And I felt like the other one of this that I did um, had the same sort of issue where there was a lot of similar like background color. And so it got a, had a lot of false fits too. So yeah, I don't know, I could have that experience here as well, especially like on the, her red top and maybe some of the background. But uh, you know, fingers crossed, it's still gonna be fun to do, so. Yeah, looking forward to it. And then we've got a few more here. Here's another Christmas one that I bought for my collection. And sadly, I didn't get to do it this Christmas. So I don't know if it's gonna be Christmas in July or next Christmas, but it's really cute. It's kind of like an Advent one. This is 12 days of Catmas, very important holiday event. 12 puzzles in one box. So it's 12 individual 48 piece puzzles, 576 pieces in total. And yeah, it's just like, these little rectangle mini rectangle puzzles of uh, naughty kitties cheeky Christmas cats so we've got we've got them on the back well we've got one here where it's a cat in a uh, Christmas stocking looking a bit cheeky uh, we've got cats playing with you know in a Christmas tree playing with Christmas ornaments of course because why wouldn't they uh, one trying to get like some Christmas doves uh, yeah basically cats getting up to all sorts of mischief one who's looks like they've spilt the cookies and milk that's for Santa and is drinking up the milk very naughty kitty but yeah I love the style it's really cute and whimsical very fun and I'm a bit sad that I didn't get to do it this last Christmas so I don't know when I'm gonna get to do it maybe July we'll see um, but either way I think it'll be a really fun one to do and I'm definitely looking forward to it it's so cute and then what else have we got oh, we've got a okay you are allowed to judge me um, this is a Seiko one and I always go on about how I don't really like the quality of Seiko I find it very flimsy cheap lots of puzzle dust but I am still a sucker and I keep buying their puzzles because they're really cute puzzle images and they're you know often on sale and so yeah I'm a sucker and I I bought another Seiko so this one is 750 pieces and oh, okay this also annoys me this packaging so Oh, even this one like there's okay there's a lot in this series I think the series is called groovy animals but they never have like the name of the actual 
individual puzzles. So they usually have like the pictures on the bottom of the others from the series. And they sometimes have the name of the series, although I can't even see it for this one. Oh no, it does say, yeah, Groovy Animals, but then it never says what this one is, but I'm guessing it's a llama. <laughs> so we'll call it llama. Um, but anyway, I just always think it's really, they're really cute. Like I've got the tiger one and what else? I've got like a horse one, I think, but I just think they're really, they, this series is really fun and colorful and the llama especially is really pretty. They're just really cute and so cheerful, like the rainbow with the butterflies and little stars and hearts and lots of flowers and then the llama with its lovely little decorative outfit as well, with little tassels and pom-poms and things. And even the, like, they've even put little, like, furry bits on the llama, like its little ears are fluffy and its little chin. It's very cute. So, and its eye is, like, big and cute and, yeah. But, yeah, I find, unfortunately, I do find Seiko pieces and even the packaging kind of cheap. Like, this one did get a bit squished, but already, like, the paper of the box is, like, peeling off. And I'm like, really? This is like unopened, but it's already like looking like it's seen better days. Anyway, I think it'll be a fun one to do. It may not stay in the collection too long, depending how annoyed I get with the uh, quality. But I, you know, I'm still happy to have this cute one in my collection. It's still gonna be a fun one to do. And then we've got a couple more. Um, we've got this one by Mad Cat Puzzles. It's only 300 pieces and it's called I Am Hummingbird. So it's a like shaped puzzle. Um, and I've seen these around on Instagram and I've been like dying to try one out. There's like a whole series like I am bear, I am tiger, that sort of thing. But yeah, I think the hummingbird one's very pretty. Um, hopefully I've been able to find a proper image of like the whole puzzle up here somewhere. Hopefully, fingers crossed, because there's not really like the entire image of it anywhere on this box. Like it's got a little shape outline, but like this is not the puzzle image this is just part of the image and even the, oh, i guess on the back they're showing them completing it so it doesn't really show you the whole thing but anyway so i'm interested interested to see what this is like i don't know what the quality is like but obviously some of the pieces are going to be irregular shaped because to fit the shape of like the flower and the bird um but yeah it looks nice i mean i guess it's sort of a photograph maybe or a digital image so yeah, in, excited to try it. It's a bit of a weird shaped box. I don't, again, I don't know why, um, but yeah, intrigued and looking forward to trying this one. Maybe I'll try and do it soon actually. And then the last one for this pile, we have one more pile to go after this, Ugh, is this bucket. And it's called a bucket list jigsaw puzzles um, by Ridley. So Ridley's do all sorts of interesting kind of novelty puzzles and, puzzles and stuff, but they've got a few of these little bucket ones. Um, and I thought this one was very cute. So this is the 50 must read books bucket list puzzle, 1000 pieces. And I don't know, if, oh, I guess it's sort of, well, the front, I guess, of the packaging kind of has parts of like the puzzle image, which looks pretty cute. You do have like it on the back there. Um, I'm guessing you get a poster. I hope I get a poster, uh, maybe. Let's hope we do because otherwise it's going to be very hard to tell uh, what's in this puzzle. Okay, hang on. Oh yes, we have a po reference post. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, it's just this person like sitting in a chair. You don't see their face. They've got like a book covering, like they're engrossed in a book. And then, yeah, they're sitting in front of this like very jam-packed, colorful bookshelf with like all sorts of, I guess, yeah, 50 must-read books. So we've got like The Great Gatsby and what a, the Hobbit, and that's my cat telling me they want more food. Uh, it's got Pride and Prejudice, Tale uh, of the City. What else have we got here? The Complete Sherlock Holmes, The Book Thief, uh, Little Fires Everywhere. Like so many different books, and then lots of cute other things. Like we've got a little ship. Oh, well, actually, no, we have. Oh, okay. I get it. So there's the Life of Pi book here. But normally you get a ship in a bottle, but on top it's the tiger and the, uh, I guess, boy or man that's like in the story. I've never seen the movie. It looked very sad and I knew I would cry too much. So, and I don't know if I could read the book, but kind of cute that they've done a little like, uh, like uh, ship or boat in the bottle with the book. So it's kind of cute. Um, anyway, we've got like a lovely gray cat here having a snooze on the bookshelf and we've got some flowers and yeah, I guess like little things that are related to some of the stories as well. Anyway, 
enough rambling. I think this is a very fun, cute and colorful looking puzzle. I think it's gonna be very fun to do because you'll, as you do it, you'll notice more and more little details and the different like book titles and the little, uh, yeah, knickknacks and things that are hidden in the bookshelf. So yeah, I think it'll be a fun one to do. I have no idea what the quality's like. I have a lot of these and I still haven't done a whole bunch. So I should really try one out soon. Um, but yeah, I think this one will be a fun one to do. So we've got one more pile and then we'll be done. So we have finally made it to the last pile of puzzles. Uh, well, dot, dot, dot for part one of the November haul. Um, but uh, we've got a fun mix here. So let's go through them. Uh, I've got a piece of paper here to remind me to talk about a puzzle that I don't have here at the moment. I've lent it to a friend. Uh, it's the Uni Dragon uh, Iridescent Chameleon puzzle. It's their king size, which is 314 pieces. And yeah, it's this really bright, vibrant chameleon. Like it's the shape of a chameleon. And it's like these really bright, colorful colors and all these like intricate little like kind of modern patterns, like I'm trying to remember because I don't have it here. But yeah, really vibrant and eye-catching um, and definitely one that I've been, you know, had on my wish list for a while. And they, Uni Dragon were actually kind enough to gift it, gift it to me and let me choose which design I wanted. So I figured I'd choose that one since I'd been eyeing it off for such a long time. Um, yeah, it's such a cool design. Like it really is just that vibrant in real life as well. Like the colors you see on the box or in photos, it's really, it really is that bright. And so yeah, definitely my kind of puzzle, like a lot of their puzzles are because they're so colorful. Um, but yeah, really gorgeous design. So uh, their wooden puzzles uh, have like lots of little irregular piece shapes, but also like lots of really fun whimsy pieces. So ones that will match, I guess, like the image or the theme of the puzzle. Um, so that one had like lots of tropical sort of things, like I guess uh, things that would be where you'd find a chameleon, like plants and flowers and like tropical birds and other little lizards and chameleons and stuff like that and even tropical fruits like a banana and stuff like that so yeah really really well done um yeah so really glad i was able to add that one to the collection it was really fun uh, so much so that i ended up getting myself another uni dragon puzzle so let's move on to this one so this is the inspiring unicorn and i decided to get it in king size as well this one's 313 pieces so a very similar size um, yeah, they have all different sizes and you can actually get bigger than this, their royal size. But I quite liked the size of the chameleon. It was quite a fairly big anyway and uh, had like a really good level of challenge for me. So, but still very doable. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I figured why not? But yeah, this one, like they had a good sale on a little while ago. So I've been eyeing this one off as well. And this one's definitely very me. This lovely, gorgeous pink unicorn. Um, with like a rainbow mane and tail and like beautiful blue swirly clouds and these like pink crystals. It's yeah, really pretty, very much. I think uh, childhood me would have like lost my mind over this puzzle, like loved things like this, unicorns and mermaids and pink and rainbow. And yeah, I would have like lost it. <laughs> I mean, I still kind of am pretty uh, in awe of how pretty this puzzle is. But yeah, I saw a friend on Instagram do this one and. I like I'd always liked it but then when she showed all the really cute whimsies in this one I was like that's it I'm sold yeah, very yeah so there's some very cute whimsies in here so I'm very much looking forward to it but yeah it's so pretty um and the unicorn's not just plain pink it's got like lots of little patterns swirly flowers and things in it so and even the background like not plain blue it has it's gradiated and has lots of patterns and stars and things and yeah it looks really pretty very magical so that's good I guess so yeah, very much looking forward to that one. And yeah, can't wait to do the whimsies. I think they're gonna be like, stunning. And then we've got another wooden puzzle. So yeah, this is the sort of wooden puzzles of the month, I guess. So this one was also gifted to me very kindly by Woodbests. And I actually did a video on this, so I'll link that up the top. Um, I'm just gonna take the lid off because both like this and Uni Dragon, sometimes the lids don't stay on that well. So instead of it falling, <laughs> Uh, off I'll just like take it off but yeah it's this gorgeous this one's called Mandala 4 um, hang on and it's the extra large size 680 pieces and yeah just this stunning uh, rainbow colored mandala again they let me choose the design I wanted and it was a pretty hard choice because it had a lot of really fun things to choose from but I was like this looks fun and challenging and gorgeous colors and patterns so I got it and yeah definitely wasn't disappointed yeah, love how like bright it is. It's quite big as well. Like, 
oh, what is it? 20 by 20 inches. So it's, yeah, quite a big size and it was pretty challenging, but yeah, every little, um, so like the man mandala is made up of all these little scalloped sections and each one's got its own like sort of geometric or yeah, different pattern in it. And yeah, really beautiful colors, got lovely greeny yellows and teals and indigo blues, pinks, reds, oranges. Yeah, really gorgeous. So perfect for anyone who loves rainbows and colors and stuff, AKA me. Um, but yes, it was definitely quite challenging, but yeah, um, but I really enjoyed it. So I was definitely glad to have the opportunity to do this one and also add it to my collection. So yeah, enjoyed that one. And I don't know if I, well, I hope I'd do it again, but it was quite challenging. So it may not happen again for a while, but yeah, still really glad to, uh, yeah, have this one. So yeah, very grateful about that. And then what else? Um, Okay, well, let's do the Wentworth ones. So I grabbed some Wentworth ones for Christmas. Uh, ugh, got them in the wrong order. Oh, I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay, this one, which I also did a video on. So this one is the puzzle that will wind you up and I'll pop the video to that up here, which I did for Christmas. And it's listed as extra difficult and it's 252 pieces. So it's not a big piece count, but it's considered like a challenge puzzle and that's mainly because of well both the image and sort of the cut of the pieces so the images all these like it's jam-packed it's this like collage of all these little cuckoo clocks and little christmas themed things so little santas and reindeers and wreaths and snow and very festive christmasy and yeah filled with little clocks cuckoo clocks um, so it's really cute and fun and quite colorful and there's like so many little details jam-packed in here like I actually had to put my glasses on because I was getting a headache looking at all the tiny details. But yeah, I really love the image. I think it's so fun and really had a lot of, a lot of fun doing this one, but it was quite challenging, but still doable because it's only a small piece count, but yeah, it is tricky. Um, but yeah, the pieces are like, so normally most like the other two wooden puzzles I was just talking about, normally you get like irregular shaped pieces and then whimsy pieces. But this particular one, like their challenge ones, they tend to do like, a lot of repeating shapes to make it more tricky. So this one had little cuckoo clock sort of shapes, um, but repeated throughout and then other little abstract shapes that fit around them. And so, yeah, you end up with like lots of the same uh, piece shapes. So that's part of the challenge, like both that combined with the very tricky, busy image. But yeah, had a lot of fun doing this one. And yeah, I can see myself doing this one again because because it's not as big as like that mandala one, I think it's like a bit more doable um yeah but had a lot of fun and definitely tricky and i guess it definitely wound me up so yeah good fun that one and another one i um got for christmas is this beautiful nutcracker one um this is this is by the artist randy wallenman i think and i'm sorry i didn't say the artist for this one it was lena artbeat so anyway um but this one's 250 pieces and it's this beautiful um nutcracker like very colorful and vibrant and quite a bold image and then it's surrounded by all these like toys and these giant candy canes and kind of looks like a child's christmas fantasy you know like all the things you'd want for christmas like doll's house colorful ball a xylophone teddy bears like these other ballet dolls soldier uh, puzzles of course that's definitely what i want for christmas <laughs> um yeah and then there's like holly and lovely little like kind of festive pattern in the background yeah it's really beautiful and very rich and vibrant um so i really enjoyed this one although um unfortunately i believe i got the well i was told i got the wrong cut so it was supposed to have uh christmas whimsies in it but i actually had birds and flowers and i was like hang on a minute but um yeah i contacted their customer service at wentworth and they were really really good and helpful and i've actually got a replacement uh, of this puzzle on its way to me. So hopefully it should arrive very soon. So that was really good of them. They were really nice and friendly and yeah, really addressed the issue straight away. So yeah, really pleased about their customer service. And they were really nice. They just said with this one, I can try and donate it to charity or somewhere like that. So yeah, I think that's really nice of them. So yeah, um, pleased with that. But yeah, it was still, regardless of it being the wrong whimsies, I mean, I think it would be a lot more fun to do with the Christmas whimsies because that's what you're sort of expecting. But it was still beautifully made and the quality is really good and I love the image. So 
definitely looking forward to redoing this one soon with the, I guess, correct whimsy pieces. So yeah. And then the other Wentworth one I got is this really cute, uh, like Christmas cracker one. Um, and it's a very teeny weeny mini puzzle. Um, I don't know if I ever saw these before, but when I saw this one, I was like, yes, I have to get it. And this is called Jingle All The Way with the word gin, uh, like the alcoholic drink. And it's only 34 pieces and it makes up this teeny weeny cute little bottle of gin and like all this holly. Um, and it's really, I mean, it's, I guess, a bit more mature because it's for people who might enjoy alcohol. So not children, um, but yeah, it's just a very pretty ornate patterned bottle of gin and it's really cute. It's only like quite small, but just a really fun thing to put together. I mean, obviously it would make a great gift if you had your family or friends over and you got a whole bunch of different designs in these Christmas crackers and everyone got a, instead of a daggy Christmas cracker with the stupid dad jokes in it, you get a cool puzzle instead. I'd be pretty thrilled. But you know, I gave this to myself for Christmas and I was very pleased. I thought it was, yeah, really cute. So yeah, I really like this idea. I think it's really cool and just a lot of fun and really liked the little sort of pun and image. So yeah, really happy with that one. Very cute. And then we've got, okay, we've got okay, oh, some other little puzzles here from, well, kind of Gallison. So I've got another little Christmas puzzle here, um, which I didn't get to do maybe Christmas in July. I'm so behind on Christmas puzzles, a bit sad. So this is, is it Mud Puppy or is it, yeah, no, it's Gallison. Okay. And it's even got a little, we'll get to that. Okay. I'm getting distracted because it's cute. It's called Festive Friends and it's a 130 piece mini puzzle. And it's just these really cute little festive Christmas birds. So there's like a big one standing on like a little tree stump and there's like snow. And then like there other ones are stacked in like size order on each other's backs. And they've got all got little cute hats and scarves on. So they're dressed warmly for the winter. And the top one says cheers. And there's little like snowflakes, very cute, adorable. How could I resist? Um, but yeah, I guess it's designed that you could give it as a gift because there's like room on the back to write a little message, which is really cute. So such a cute like puzzle for a, a stocking stuffer, something like that, or just a little secret Santa gift or something. But yeah, really cute. I mean, I bought this to give to me, so I guess I should write, Dear Jigsaw Juby, <laughs> Merry Christmas or something. But yeah, really cute and yeah, just a sweet puzzle. And then I've got another mini puzzle from Gallison, although this is actually their sort of like sub company Mud Puppy, which is more kids, but I always think they have cool designs. So this is the Paris mini puzzle and it's only 48 pieces. So uh, I guess, I don't know if it's smaller in size, but a lot less pieces than that one. And it's just um, a cute little jam packed fun Paris city image. So I actually did the Tokyo one and I just thought it was a really cute, fun one to do. I love the art style. It's the same as like by the same artist who is, I don't know. Um, oh, uh, Erica Harrison, but yeah, the art style is really fun and bold and colorful. And this one's got like the Eiffel tower, um, Notre Dame cathedral, of course, a lady walking her dog, holding her baguette and wearing a, uh, beret, someone enjoying a coffee. It's cat, of course, more coffee. Uh, yeah, lots of like French, I guess, iconic French or Parisian things. So really cute very colorful, but yeah, I really enjoyed the Tokyo one. I mean, it's so quick and easy to do, but it's such a cute little puzzle to do for a five minute break or have on your desk or something or a cute little gift or something. Yeah, really fun. So even though it's only 48 pieces, still recommend it. I think they're just really cute and good fun to do. And there's a whole bunch of different cities so you can collect your favorites. And then we have this puzzle here from Gallison, I think, yes, uh, 500 pieces, House of Astrology. So I've said before, like I'm not really into Zodiac or horoscopes, but I really like a lot of imagery that people do for it. And that's why I got this puzzle. And you might be able to see it's actually gold foiled. So very cool. Um, I've done some of their other gold foiled puzzles. That's really hard to say. Gold foiled puzzles. And they've been really gorgeous, hard to photograph, but just stunning. And I think this one, I mean, even just the box looks great. So it's got, yeah, uh, you can see like different rectangles very colorful and detailed and pretty and each one's for different star so different star signs ah oh, i'm getting tongue-tied guys it's been a lot of puzzles to talk about but we're nearly done um so yeah all the it's sort of a cute little fun interesting image for each star sign 
Um, oh, I really like the Gemini one. I kind of wish I was Gemini because it's like pink and rainbow. I'm Taurus, by the way. Um, so I get this one up here, which is still pretty. It's more like orangey greens, but very chill looking. But, you know, I'd prefer the pink one. So maybe I'll just become a Gemini. Don't know if you could do that. Um, anyway, but each one's like, I guess like a little room or something, but they're all really detailed. Like there's a lot going on in each one. There's a cat in this one, a cat clock in this one. Yeah, and it's like, like a little room or bookshelf or something with all different paraphernalia and I guess stuff that's maybe representative of each star sign or, you know, I don't know. But I just think it looks really cool and pretty and I really love like all the things going on in here. So yeah, I think this one will be a really gorgeous one to put together. I feel like I really rambled about that one. <laughs> Losing my mind, guys. And then we're down to the final two puzzles. So they're kind of massive Ugh. and completely impractical in these giant like tubes. So huge. Um, so this is by, I only recently discovered them and I was like, I must find these. So it's called Design Works Inc. And I think it's a US company. And this is like, I think they do other things other than puzzles, like maybe stationary items and stuff. And it's called Jig Time, which is their jigsaw puzzle range. And they all seem to come in these giant tubes. And this one is, uh, it's called Groove Geo. And it is 1000 pieces and it's actually gold foiled as well. So very fancy. Um, but yeah, this one's this beautiful kind of retro. I feel like the color scheme is a bit retro, like almost a bit 50s with this sort of pastel like teal color but yeah it's got all these like abstract geometric shapes so i think the puzzle image itself is like this it's a square so it's like this square here of all these like pinky colors mustards oranges peaches this teal and then it has gold foil on it as well so yeah really cool and um i checked like it does actually have like a reference poster inside which i think it's like on nice card stock so you could like actually frame that if you wanted which is pretty cool. So these are very like, feel a bit extra and very much a display piece, I think. Um, I, yeah, I don't know what the quality's like, so I'm interested to find out, but I mean, they just were so eye-catching. And for what, I mean, for the look of them and everything, they actually weren't too, too expensive, like maybe similar price to Ravensburger actually. So not overly expensive, not the cheapest puzzle ever either, but you know, but for something very aesthetically pleasing, very designery, I thought it was actually pretty well priced. We'll have to see about the quality, fingers crossed. But yeah, I just thought it looked super cool and very, very pretty. Um, I don't know where to put this. Ah, ah, let's just put it back on this chair. And then the other one, also by Designworks Inc. and Jig Time, is called Crazy 8. And this is also 1,000 pieces and it's, I think, yeah, also a square. It's very me. Um, my kind of puzzle for sure very colorful it's again a square puzzle and it has like this dark kind of gradiated background but then it has it's called crazy eight so it's this eight symbol or i guess kind of like the infinity loop and it's like got a rainbow gradient on it and then the top is this sort of bright coral color i guess the same as this sort of what the tube is like this yeah orangey coral um and this dark yeah bluey tealy background but just so eye-catching and bold and I think it looks really cool. So yeah, this is definitely probably my favorite of the two. I mean, I really like this one as well. It's very more pastely pretty and this one's more like in your face. Also very quirky, but I just thought it was just super cool. So that background's probably gonna kill me though. Um, but yeah, really excited about these. I just thought they were so interesting and I hadn't really heard of the brand before until recently. I don't even know how I came across it, but just, yeah, love their designs. I think they're really fun. So now that I've rambled on for uh, four piles worth of puzzles, uh, yeah, that's everything for part one of the November haul. Um, so yeah, I think there was a pretty good mix here. Uh, there were heaps of different puzzles, lots of different brands, and yeah, very happy with what I got. Uh, spoiled, absolutely spoiled for choice. Um, I have no idea when and how I'm gonna do all these, but I'm very, happy and grateful to have them in my collection. That was a lot of puzzles, but I definitely had fun going through them all with you. Although I'll be taking a bit of a break before starting on part two of the November haul. Although hopefully I'll have that one out before too long. So you don't have to wait too long between part one and part two. But in the comments below, let me know uh, which puzzles from part one of the November haul you liked the most and were there any here that you also added to your collection. 
If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore jibby where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.